Welcome to Dairy Judging 101. I am Dr. Katherine Knowlton. I'm a professor in the Dairy Science Department at Virginia Tech. We're creating a sequence of short recordings covering the basics of judging dairy cattle. This module focuses on the single most important trait in judging cows, the udder. If you've had any experience with dairy judging, you're familiar with the Unified Scorecard created and updated by the Purebred Dairy Cattle Association, or PDCA. This is the key source material, and the relative weights assigned to different traits is based on scientific research. As mentioned, the udder is the most important type trait when selecting for profitable cattle, and within this category, specific traits are assigned varying weights according to their importance. This scorecard is an exceptionally useful reference. If you don't have access to a copy, you can obtain one from any of the breed associations or from Hordes Dairymen. When I was learning how to judge cows, I remember learning the parts of the cow, learning what was good and bad, but then being overwhelmed by the number of traits I was supposed to consider. I didn't know where to start. I remember one time completely busting a class, placing it backwards, and then saying to my coach, okay, so she's fat, but she's so big, or I know she's got a bad udder, but she's so dairy. Considering all the traits at once is confusing. Instead, what you need to do is set priorities and then use them in placing cows. What's important and what's not. In the bigger picture, you're going to be making decisions all your life. Decision making is knowing what you're looking for, recognizing it when you see it, and then choosing the best of the options according to your priorities. That sounds a lot like judging cows. So what is important? Both the research and the everyday experience of dairy farmers tells us to emphasize good uttered, clean cut, open ribbed cows with functional feet and legs and a sound frame. What's not important? What's not important are things like being the tallest cow in the class or being the biggest cow in the class. It's not important how neat her tail head is. Does she have the straightest top line? Do her parts blend smoothly? These are all pretty points. These are not things that matter in terms of profitable cows, so when you're judging, don't emphasize them. Consider these pretty points only when you're comparing the cows in your class that meet your priorities. What I'm saying is, first, find the good uttered dairy cows that are sound in their feet, legs, and frame. Then, and only then, do you look at the pretty points. The system we teach at Virginia Tech is based on the PDCA scorecard, but modified a bit to facilitate sorting of cows or grouping. We've got to first get the good cows sorted from the bad cows. And we do that by focusing on big picture priorities. As we're evaluating a cow, the first thing we zoom in on is her udder. And within udder, I ask myself these questions in this order. How's her rear udder? How's her ligament? What about her teat placement? And is there any drama? In the next few minutes, I'll talk through each of these to explain what we're really asking and how we use the answers. Again, a cow walks in the ring, and the first thing I look at is her udder, and within that, rear udder. Rear udder is pretty simple. Is the attachment high, wide, and firm? The answers are yes, no, or I'd like to find something better. At this point, I'm not looking to identify the highest and widest rear udder in the class. My goal is to sort the cows into groups, get the good uttered dairy cows with functional feet and legs grouped together. Once I have them grouped, then I place cows within those groups. That's when I start comparing. But for now, it's just yes, no, or I'd like to find something better. Suspensory ligament, cleft, crease, different names for the same thing. It's a ligament, elastic tissue, that's attached to the body wall and extends between the two halves of a cow's udder. It's the main thing that holds her udder on. Great cleft is easy to see, defined having between the rear teats. You see the jersey and the Holstein on top. If you can see that crease all the way up the rear udder, bonus points. What's more tricky is when the ligament is doing its job, but is less obvious. And that's the criteria. Is it doing its job? In the Swiss on the left, the ligament is not as defined as in the jersey and the Holstein above, but it's clearly doing its job. The udder appears well supported and the teats are in. I'd have no problem saying yes on the question of ligament for this cow and the one next door. On the other hand, the Guernsey on the right I'm very critical of. Not only is the cleft not well defined, it's clearly not doing its job. The third question I ask on udder is about teat placement. Are her teats in? What I want is for the teats to be under the udder and not to point out. On this, as in most things, the yeses are easy to pick out, and the three cows on this slide are clearly a yes on teat placement. Here are three cows that don't do as well on this question. 
The short horn on the right is, I'd like to find something better. You see that her front teats are out, but this isn't awful. I could live with it if I had to. The jersey in the middle I'm a bit more critical of because both her front and rear teats are wide. But for me, she's also an I'd like to find something better. The jersey on the left, though, is a clear no. Her teats are out and they point out a double sin. You remember that the final question on Utter was, is there any drama? This is a catch-all category that includes faults that do matter, but mostly in the extremes. One example is the floor of the cow's udder. Few cows are perfectly level from front to rear, but a slope like the Guernsey on the left has is definitely a problem. Light quarters is another obvious example. They're easy to see, but you have to evaluate the degree to which that quarter is light. Again, few cows are perfectly symmetrical in their udder, and asymmetry doesn't bother me. The cow shown, though, in the middle there is more than asymmetry. She's light in the left rear quarter, and I'd like to beat her for it. A cow with a blind or nearly blind quarter, though, is a no. Also, utter texture problems fall in the drama category. The Holstein on the right has a lot of congestion, and it's enough that, to me, she is a no on utter. Here are a few more examples of things I'm looking for when I ask myself about drama. For utter falls in this category. If it's loose, you've got to be critical of it, and this Guernsey is loose in her foreudder. But if the foreudder is just kind of round or kind of funny shaped, it's really not a big deal. Another example is quartering on the udder floor. You see that Holstein in the middle, and she has almost a cleft between her front and her rear teats. This is not attractive, but it's also not a big deal. The final question my students often have is how to deal with deeper udders, and whether you should be critical of a cow with a deep udder really depends. Older cows, like the Holstein on the right, are going to have deep udders. As long as that udder is well attached and well supported, this shouldn't bother you too much. If she's a yes on rear udder, ligament, and teat placement, a cow with a lot of udder doesn't bother me, as long as it's a good udder. As with most things in life, to be successful in dairy judging, you need to know your priorities and stick to them. Don't get distracted by the small stuff. I'm a big believer in mantras, so all together now, rear udder, ligament, teats, any drama? 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 I hope that this tutorial on judging udders has helped you and that you'll stay tuned to the Virginia Tech Dairy Judging channel on YouTube for advice on evaluating other traits. I do need to thank Hordes Dairyman, who provided a lot of the photos that we're using. And obviously Dr. Mike Barnes, the longtime coach of the Virginia Tech judging team, who shaped the approach I've described here. Also, a shout out to Hannah Van Dyke and Chelsea Abbott, Virginia Tech students who spent a lot of time taking, cropping, and organizing photos for this project. My final thank you is to dairy farmers across the country who host judging practices for our team and yours.